we are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent, Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus 5 verse 1. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy the 20th chapter. Here in Israel united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Which one of these do you identify with the most? The top one. So you're from the tribe of Judah, right? That's right. Maybe from the tribe of Judah. The top one. Uh, so which one? Right I'm the lower Judah. Right here? So you the tribe of Judah. So you so-called American black. So I got a question for you, my brother. So uh, what other great man did you know according to Bible history that came from the tribe of Judah? Bring it out! I don't know none, man. You don't know none, bro? Hey, you know, hey, like, hey, look on the right side, right here. All right. So you're familiar with the image of Christ, right? So, based on two signs right there, which one do you believe is the true image of Christ according to the Bible scripture, the Bible definition? <laughs> you don't know? No. Alright, so which one you used to see in the churches? This over here. The one, one on the left side? Yeah. The one on the left side right here? Right there. That's yeah. the one you used to see in the church. So, if you got these images here in the church, my question is, what about that right image? You got, you got any idea of who that might be? You finna fight, you finna read it to you. Bring it on! Hey, give me a uh, Revelations 101. See, according to the Bible, we finna read to you, Brother James, the true image of Christ. The true scripture right. of Christ according to the Bible. Right. Right. Yeah, give me Revelation 101. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So pause right there. The root word of revelation. The root word of revelation to reveal. We finna reveal the image of Jesus Christ in this first chapter of the book of Revelation. Right. Read on. 1 and 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. All right, so the Most High God appeared to John the Revelator. John the Revelator wrote the physical description of Christ as it was given to him. Give me a revelation, uh, <laughs> go down to verse 10. Give me verse 10. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So John the Baptist, so John the Revelator, he was on the Isle of Patmos. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Read on. And heard behind me a great voice. As of a trumpet. So Christ cried out to John the Revelator. He heard a great voice as a trumpet. Christ cried out to him. This is what he said. Read on. Verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So Paul right there. So who is the Alpha and the Omega? Jesus Christ. Right, right. Christ the Alpha and the Omega. Read on. The first and the last. So he the first and the last. No, Alpha and Omega mean. Read on. And what thou seest, write in a book. So he told... John the Revelator on the island of Patmos, hey, what you see, what you looking at right now, me talking to you, you need to write this in the book. Read on. Right. What thou seest, write in a book. So what thou see is write in the book. So we're going to jump down to 14. We're going to see what John the Revelator saw. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says his head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head, they refer to the hair on his skull, the hair, and his hair referred to his face hair. They were white. And they were wool, wool and texture. So who got woolly hair? 
who, who got wood like him, my brother? We do. We do. So based off them two signs right there, you know, what, what closely matched what we read out the Bible thus far? The one on the right side, right? What about the one on the left side? Not so, right? No. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Head and his hairs white like wool. The hair on his head and his facial hair, like his beard. Right. White like wool, the wool and the texture. Read on. As white as snow. White as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire because it's built the prophecy that the Messiah will have eyes red as wine. And you know, he drunk wine in moderation. That's written in uh, Genesis 49 and 12. We don't have to get, get that right now, but read on. His head and his hands was white like wool. Head and his hair was white like wool. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Drunk wine in moderation. And his feet. Like unto fine brass. So he said, feet like unto fine brass. So, Brother Jane, what's the color of brass, Brother Jane? What's they say again? What's the color of brass? Like gold. Gold, gold, like gold brown, right? Brown. What about you, my brother? Hey, bro, what's your name right there? Brother Jane. Uh, Kevin. What's your name again? Kevin. Kevin, all right. Okay, so what's the color of brass there, Brother Kevin? Uh, brownish? Yeah, brown, right? Color of brass, brown, almost like the color of a penny. This is a fresh That's mint right. penny. As you can see, it's like copper. This is a shade of brown. Right. So he said Christ had feet of brass, a shade of brown. But what else? Read on. As if they burned in a furnace. So if they burned in a furnace. So if you burn anything, no matter what the color, what would the end result color would be? Black. Black. If I burn a white sheet of paper, what color am I going to get in the process? Right. Black. Black. So that means Christ's feet was dark brown, burnt black. That's right. So my bro brother James, brother Kevin, so if you take your shoes off, and I say you got feet that was burned in the furnace, dark black feet, if the color of your feet would be the same color as your face and the same color as your hands. Right, so based on the scripture that we read in the Bible, if Christ's feet was one color, that means the rest of his body was the same color as well, right? Right. So, so, brother, so brother James, so what we read so far, which one of these images match? Yeah. Right, the one on the right side, the one on the right side, eight. Based on the biblical description that we just read, Christ looked just like that, or That's similar right. to it. Yeah. So say, if I was a police sketch artist, and somebody gave me a description of what Christ looked like, based on what I read in the Bible, hmm? I'll be, yeah, yeah, you'll live, yeah. yeah but yeah, but uh, if I was a police sketch artist, and somebody gave me a description of the Bible, I would draw the image on your on your left side, mm. the black image of Christ. What's so, but guess what though? You say you're from the tribe of Judah. Hey, brother Kevin, what tribe are you from? Look on this side. Which one of these you identify with? You know, as I told Brother James, the names on the right hand side, the names on your left hand side is what God called them. The names on your right hand side will be names we got here in our captivity. You have to go with Judah. You have to go with Judah. So we ran over the you know, description of Christ. Guess what? Christ himself came from the tribe of Judah. And we can prove that. Even he does uh he, 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 he do 714. We said prove out. that Christ came from the tribe of Judah, the same tribe that you brother hell from. So that means Christ is your big brother. That's right. Christ is one of us. Christ looked like you. Christ looks right. like you. He what? probably looked like your one of your granddads with the white hair and white beard. That's I know right. you've seen old so-called black men look just like them in their picture, right? That's biblical. Read what you got, bro. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 7 and verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So he said, it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. So brother James, brother Kevin, who is our Lord and Savior? Jesus. Jesus. So he said he came out the tribe of Judah. So if Christ was walking around today, he will be classified as a so-called American black tribe of Judah. That's right. So hey, so guess what? Not only Christ is black, the nation of Judah, the tribe of Judah as well, the so-called black tribe is also. And we can prove that. Uh, Jeremiah 14 and 2 give you context. So if Christ came from Judah, so that means the tribe he came from, all the people look similar to his complexion, right? That's right. So we've been taught many things in this world. We ain't never been taught the truth of the Bible. We've been fooled that the people over there in the land right now that call themselves Jews with the curly fries inside their head. Like they the they the people of the book. But that, that's not true. We are the people of the book. We gonna read what the tribe of Judah look like. We gonna read what the true Jews look like. Not the best picture, bro. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, and verse 2. Judah morning. Judah morning. Judah's morning because we in captivity. They're they going through slavery. They're going through hardship. Even during the time of Christ, when Christ was going up through the Roman time, Rome, Rome was persecuting the Jews. Just like today in America, we getting persecuted in hard bunches of slavery now. We, we are mourning right now because we don't know who we are. We don't. And the gates thereof language. The gates thereof language because our leadership are not teaching us the real truth of the Bible. 
They teach us God is white, Christ is white, God loves everybody. And slave mouth and slave get the same hymn if they pray and believe. Read on. They are black. Uh, it's in their duffel bag. Unto the so, ground. So the scripture said the tribe of Judah is what? Black unto the ground. So the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. So what is that? So you got any understanding of what that means being black unto the ground? What about you, brother Kevin? You know what that means to be black into the ground? When you go, you gonna always be black. Black into the ground. Okay, so y'all familiar with the creation story, right? So God formed man from what? The dust of the ground, right? Hey, give me that precept. Read. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. The, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. So what color is the dust of the ground, my brothers? Like black, black, like, like shades of brown, right? You know, on the top soil, you got light shade of brown. The dig you dig, the bark you get. Right, right. It's like God created Adam from the dust of the ground. That's why you got different shades of our people. Right. From uh, light skinned brown to dark skinned brown. We are black unto the ground. Read on. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. God formed man from the dust of the ground. Go back to Jeremiah 14 and 2. We're finish that out. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourned, and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. To the tribe of Judah, Christ, we are black unto the ground. Read on. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. The cry of Jerusalem is gone up. We in captivity. They in captivity in the book of Jeremiah is like we in captivity today. So we just proved that Christ is black, the tribe of Judah is black, and you so-called uh, the brother brother of James. They know you and this like according to the Bible. That's right. So okay, so I got a question for you, bro. Do, do you know how God feels about his special people? You know, you special unto God by you being an Israelite. You know, God has favor towards you that he don't have toward anybody else. Yeah. Hey, give me Deuteronomy 76. Let me give you a sense of how God feels about you being the chosen people. Hey, my brother. Hey, what's your name, bro? Who? Carlos. You got any questions, Carlos? But your last name according to the Bible, Carlos? Yeah, yeah. So hold on, brother. Hey, check this out. Hey, read, read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, and verse 6. This is important, man. You need to stay right here, but this is important for you, bro. Read. read for thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. So you holy unto the Lord thy God, man. Right. You, you, you his chosen people. Right. You are the tribe. You are from the seed of Israel. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So God had chosen the Israelites, all 12 tribes, all the people you see on this sign, to be a special people unto himself. And what else? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God said the Israelites, all 12 tribes, were designed to be above all people upon the face of the earth. So look at us today. Are, are we truly above all people upon the face of the earth today? No, no, it's messed nah, up. No, no, of course. You know, through yeah. our history, especially you know, during the, the 60s and 70s, you know, we, we marched for equality. You know, we marched for equal justice. No justice, no peace. But God said the Israelites supposed to be above all people. Right. Yeah, throughout our history, we've been marching for equality. It out. It's not supposed to be the case. It's supposed to be above all people. So, yeah. so brother Kevin, so if we are not above all people today, then tell me this: who is? Who, who in the world? Who, who controlling everything right now? White people. Bring who? it out. White people. Say it one more time. White people. Why is that? Like God I said. Won't stick together like it, that. That's yeah. true. That is true. What? What? Yeah. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Why else? Well, why else we ain't, ain't, ain't rooting like right? We ain't supposed to right now. Oh, man. There's so many things, man. Hey, what about you, brother Kevin? Yes, sir. Hey, why are we not the top nation in the world today? Uh, let me think. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, uh, why, why we ain't on top right now? Like God said, we're supposed to be above all people, but today we ain't. Uh, why is that? Something about not being able to get along. Hmm? Something about not being able to get along. Hey, that's part of it too. But we we can, we can give you the context of why we are not above all people. Because we as a people, you know, we don't keep God's commandments. Now, as we open up today, we read uh, Psalms 119, 142, that the law is the truth. And John 8, 32, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. But a lot of us don't know the truth. We don't know that we got to keep God's law. So give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The pause right there. So, when Moses brought our people out of Egypt, you know, we made ruin the covenant with God. Say, hey, by you, by, hey, by you the little people, we're going to keep your commandments. Right. We made a deal with God. We're going to keep his commandments. So, this is the flip side of the deal. This is the flip side of the contract. Or what happens when we don't keep the commandments. Read. 
to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So Paul, so like you state, we don't, we weren't sticking together, which is command, we weren't getting along, which is command, plus we were doing other things that were contrary to what God was saying. We're gonna get that, we're gonna get to that. But read on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So brother James, so is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? If I were to curse you out, would you feel good after I finish? So, so curse is a bad thing. And hey, what about you, my brother? Curse is a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing. So the Bible said, hey, if the nation of Israel, hey, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. He give you the context on who this, Bible, who this book of the Bible is talking to. It ain't going toward everybody. It's only talking to a certain target, specific group of people. That's He's going right. to find out what? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So Paul's right there. So these be the words that Moses spoke unto all Israel. All these people who showing this sign here, all 12 tribes. What? The target audience is Israel, not everybody. So go back to 15. So he told us the nation of Israel, if you don't keep these commandments, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. So we both keep commandments. Read on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So all these curses will come upon the nation of Israel for disobeying God's law. And we're going to find out the first curse and see if that's still relevant today in 2020. Read what you got. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. This is the first curse that happened towards the nation of Israel for disobeying God's law, Brother Kevin. So I'm going to ask you today, okay, so who lives in the worst parts of America? If I want to go to the slums, the ghettos, the hood, the trap, who I'm going to see predominantly living in? If I go to the hood, who will be living in the hood? What about you, bro? If I go to the same, take it to the hood, take it to the trap. Who I'm going to find there? Black people. Right. So, is the hood, the ghetto, the slums a necessary a decent place to live? How you going to be looking? But how you, what, 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 how you make them stay? But, but predominantly, is there a good place to live? Because they say where we live is always high crime, high violence. Bring it out, right. Is there a good place to live? No. All right, okay, so who live in the best parts of the country? White people. Who? White people. So, this is Raleigh, North Carolina, right? So, don't, so Raleigh, North Carolina, but don't in the hoods to get on the side people, right? Right. So, what if I go to Charlotte? Will I find the same thing? Pretty much. What about Miami, right. uh, What about Greensboro? I'm gonna find the same. What about in Miami, Florida? Will I find the same thing? What about you know Los Angeles, California, New York City? I go to the islands of Jamaica. No matter which way. No, man, exactly. No matter which way you go, you gonna find our people living in the same condition. So is that coincidence or that something greater? Uh, that ain't no coincidence. It's Bible prophecy, man. Hey, it will be read because the Israelites didn't keep God's law. These curses gonna fall upon us and overtake us. Read that again from the top. Verse 16. Curse shalt thou be in the city. Curse shalt thou be in the city. So that means no matter where the Israelites go, they always gonna have the impoverished areas. You know what the term ghetto means? You know the definition of the word ghetto? What is The definition of the word ghetto is a place where the Jews well, so who, who dwell in the ghettos of America today? That's right. So-called black man, right? Yeah. So based off that definition of ghetto, the place where the Jews dwell, if you want to find the true Jews of the Bible, go to the hood, That's go right. to the traps, right. go to the ghetto, then we're going to find the people there. Read on. Curse shalt thou be in the city, and curse shalt thou be in the field. So curse shalt thou be in the city, curse shalt thou be in the field. So where in the history have our people ever, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American been cursed in the field? Teach up. Look at the sign right here, my brother. When, when, this, when did this happen? Look at the sign right here. You know you got slavery, slavery day, right? So who, who was enslaved with us? Was the Chinese in the field with our people? Were the Arabs in the field with our people? What about the white man? Were you picking cotton right beside him? He was in the field. He was riding the horse, drinking his, drinking his water. Right. With his rifle. Make sure, you know, we working hard. Right. So first without being in the field. The field of agriculture, slavery, where our people picked tobacco, cotton, sugar cane, right, right. 400 plus years and did not get paid one red penny. Right, right. Right. What about the day of 2020? Curses out being in the field. You ever heard of something called the career field, the job field? Right. You know, first fire, last hire. Who, 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 who that relates to? Who working all the minimum wage jobs, my brother? 
You know, we live from paycheck to paycheck. Waiting on government assistance to come in to make their ends meet. That's right. That's us. Read that. Hey, curses that be in the city, curses that be in the field. This is the first curse that will be brought out. And so far, who do these curses match? Match us. So if you're ready to do the run to one on one, that book will go on to all of Israel. So, hey, this is the first curse of Israel. You know, not only so-called blacks going through the same affliction, you got the Hispanics. Right. You know, they children getting separated at the border. You got the Native Americans on the reservation. Right. That's right. You know, this whole land was there before the white man showed up. Right. The white man took the best parts of the land and put them on the worst part called reservation. Right. The curses fit our people. So that's the first curse. So uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy 37. The book of Deuteronomy. Bring it up. 28 and verse 37. Bring it up. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. So thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. So what's a proverb, uh, brother? What about you, brother? You know what a, a proverb? No. You know, proverb goes into a wise saying, like a stereotype. Right. Like, niggas love chicken and watermelon. You know, you want to hide something from a black man, put it in the book, and niggas don't read. Right. Black people ain't never on time. Those are proverbs, stereotypes, right. wise saying. So, what's a byword? What's a byword, my brother? I, I can help you out. A byword is being something called outside of what God calls you. That's right. Being called black, right. African American, right. Negro, right. color. Those are byword. Right. right, because God called us Judah, That's Benjamin, right. Levi, That's Israel. Right. God called us the nation of Israel. God called us Israelite. That's right. right. Guess what? Us being called another byword is Bible prophecy. Give me Isaiah 65, 15. Bring it up, we can give you more context that our name's been changed. Right. Hey, last scripture. Hey, last scripture, we're going to switch our new teaching new read. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65 and verse 15. Bring it out. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. Oh, the Bible said we shall leave our name for a curse. So one of the curses we just read, we shall be called a proverb and a byword. In Isaiah 65, 15, we're going to leave our name for a curse. Read. Unto my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. We God's servants, we being called by another name. No longer are we being known as Israelites, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Judah. Right. We being known as color, black, nigga, right. African American, right. Hispanic, Indian. That's Bible prophecy. This Bible is talking about us the whole time, brother. Right. But, uh, Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.